Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same to deliver her baby that was dead in her inside of her and she said I don't want my baby dead I want my baby alive and so we prayed over the baby and of course the next year when I was there she's holding the baby the baby came back to life and one of the men who was sitting there watching everything he just kept observing and watching and observing and I could see somebody is tugging at him like going up there going up there they kind of instead of getting on a line like we had here where you know who you're praying they would kind of step out in the aisle and then they'd come up and they'd kind of step out in the aisle and they'd come up sometimes there would be a few in the aisle in a line and then they'd kind of step up and then it looked like well we're about to the end and here come a few more somebody get healed and here come a few more step out and get in the line and but this one i could see the pastor keep nudging this one guy going up there going up there he was probably about 80 something years old and and he kept "Mm, mm, no Finally, he saw this one, their bad knees, whatever, and they were running and running. They took their cast off or their boot off, and he saw them running, and he was watching that, and he tapped them and asked them something, and they told him something. The next thing I know, he walked up, and I said, what do you need prayer for? He said, my knees. My knees are real bad. My husband told him, said, you get over here and sit down. So he took him over to the side and set him down. My husband got down on the floor on his knees, and he began to pray for this man's knees. And as he was praying for him, the man kept saying, oh, my knees are hot. I got fire in my knees. My knees are hot. And my husband said, well, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Lord. Jesus is healing you. And he said, you have diabetes, don't you? And the man said, yes. And he said, yes, I see that in you, and I see it's causing this and that. And he said, "As I'm, the heat that's going through your legs is fixing to go through all your body, and God's healing your diabetes. And about that time, this man jumps up, takes off running. He's running around the building. And then at one point, he got over here to the corner of the building, and he had pulled his pant legs up. But I was busy praying for people, so I didn't notice he pulled his pant legs up. All I noticed was I could see a bunch of skin over there. I'm thinking, Somebody's pulling their pants off. (laughs) I'm like, oh, my goodness, too much information, TMI. But I noticed all of a sudden, whatever it was, he was taking off these knee braces. They were real thick knee braces. And and he come flying by me, high ceiling like this or higher, and he threw them in the air, and he said, oh, I've got it. I'm healed. I'm healed, and took off running again. It was awesome. Now, I didn't know that, and neither did my husband at the time. But that was the pastor's dad. And he was Baptist. He didn't believe in healing. And he didn't believe all this running. And he thought his son was crazy that he had gotten Pentecostal because he used to be a Baptist church. And he was wanting to know what happened to him. But he told his son, he said, I'm going to tell you something. When I get back, I'm having a talk with my preacher. If he don't change things, I'm leaving. Whew. Now he goes home, he starts eating ice cream and donuts, and his wife said, what are you doing? You cannot have this stuff. You have diabetes. He said, I'm healed. He kept taking his sugar. He kept taking his sugar. For two weeks, he was acting crazy. And it's like I had to finally tell him to tell him, don't do that. That's how you got the diabetes to begin with. He said, I don't care. I hadn't been able to eat this stuff for years, and I'm going to eat everything I can for a while, and then I'll be good. But God healed him. What happened? He was touched. It wasn't Joanne and Randy. Jesus touched him. Let me tell you, as I began to look at those scriptures last night, even as I was telling them about how they bring, they brought, I began to notice that when they brought them to Jesus, when they bring them to Jesus, when people came with the plan and they got there, I began to notice in those scriptures that Jesus put forth his hand and touched them. Like the one man said, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus said, I will. But what he first did, he said, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thy clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, a lot of people say, well, I just really don't know if it's the will of God. I went to go pray for a lady at a house meeting that 
there was probably about 40 people in this little house meeting. And I came to her, and she was sitting on the couch, and she said, well, now, honey, it's okay. I know it's probably the will of God. I said, what's the will of God? Well, you know, it, I, I'm just wanting to be strong and, and carrying this because I know it's the will of God for me to be sick. And I said, are you kidding me? And she said, no, it is God's will. You know, I've been praying, and he hasn't healed me yet, so I know it. And I said, shut up, devil. And she said, what did you say? I said, I'm not talking to you. Whoever's been telling you these lies, I'm telling them to shut up. I said, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Why was he beaten, mocked, cursed, and falsely accused? Why did he take all of that if he says, I'm going to make you sick and I'm going to heal you? I'm going to pick and choose, and some of you, I'm just going to let you be sick, and I'm going to make you sick. No, the reason sickness and disease happen is because we live in a fallen world where there is sin, and the devil's running rapid, and the man has given him dominion and rights when they didn't obey God, and to this day when we still don't obey God, it still gives him dominion, dominion and right to come against us. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can come to the Father and we can ask for a miracle and we can say, if thou wilt, thou can cleanse me. Not if it's your will. Jesus said, I will. It is my will because I paid it all on Calvary so that you may be healed, delivered, saved, and set free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Sometimes you don't always know the day he's going to touch. Sometimes you don't know the hour, but he's going to do it. Amen. I know I went for a long time. I had this horrible pain in my neck. I would go to church and preach, and as long as I was up preaching, during the anointing, there was no pain. It was almost like that devil couldn't talk. He couldn't pinch me. couldn't do nothing. It was like, just let me preach day and night. And my husband probably wouldn't have got worried. I'd just keep preaching to him as soon as church was over so that this would not go away. I mean, that this would stay away. But as soon as church was over, ow, oh, oh. And I would cry and I would pray and I'd tell the saints, gather around. They, I mean, I probably had so much oil slapped on me by the time the two-week revival was over, I probably used most all the bottle of oil because I told them all, put oil on me again. Anoint me with oil. The Bible says in James 5, 15, any sick among you, let them call upon the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil. Pray the prayer of faith and the Lord shall raise them up. Now, there is no formula in healing. There is no formula in deliverance. But that is one thing that God gave us that says as a church that we can take and call on the elders of the church. So if you want to call it a formula, that one probably is. Other than that, there really is no formula. In fact, Jesus must have known the church was going to be sick because he had to die for our sins, sickness, and disease. Also, in Psalms, it says many, I think it's 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's us. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. Run, devils, run, because Jesus is here. The healer here, Dr. Jesus says, let my people Go. Amen. Amen. So I realize that God made a way of escape just through salvation. He made a way of escape through deliverance. And he made a way of healing through his stripes, through the crucifixion, through his love, mercy, and his faith. Wow. So we have a way. And it's in him. We can be healed. What do we need? A touch. I need your touch, Lord. That's why Catherine Goldman said, I'm not going out there because I can't touch him. It's got to be you, Jesus. 
And even tonight as I was studying and last night when I left out of the service and I was, Lord, what do you want to talk on? And he went back to those scriptures and said, Lord, I've already talked on they brought wood. And he kept saying, the touch, just one touch from me. Even the woman realized that if she could touch Jesus, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I would be made whole. Peter's mother-in-law was with a fever. He's gone to a house. Probably they fixed a big roast beef dinner. I had all these good things. Jesus had been preaching. And they said, come on, let's go to Peter's house. And Peter's mother-in-law couldn't get out of bed to, to serve the dinner. Probably had it in the oven and said, oh, just go in there, honey. It's in the oven. Jesus said, what's wrong with your mother-in-law? He said, she's been running a high fever. We've been praying. We've been anointing her. We've used a half a bottle of oil on her. We don't know. Jesus, we don't know what to do. He says, I'll go in. And it said in there, let me see if I can find it, because he took her by the hand. Let's see if it's, oh, Matthew eight fifteen, And he touched her hand. <laughs> what happened? Jesus, what? He touched her hand. And the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. I bet she began to put the roast and the potatoes out on the table and the biscuits and all the good things she made and the pumpkin pie and the apple pie, all a mold with the ice cream and all. And then she said, I got to go. They said, where are you going? I got to go tell my neighbors what happened. They're sick with the fever and this one's got blind eyes and this one's lame and this one's busted, disgusted. I got to go show them that Jesus healed me. The fever's gone and I got to go minister to some others as she ministered in the house praise God glory to God I've been set free I'm healed see you later enjoy the dinner went all around and began to tell everybody by that evening what happened they brought a whole bunch to her house and it said many were possessed with devils and sickness and disease. They, I, history says, now I don't know, this is what I heard. History said that the fever she had was something like what we call the black plague. Even a lot of Romans had it and a lot of people in their homes had it. And many people were sick with it or like the H1N1, you know, the big disease that hits. And, everything. and that's what history, I understood, said that she had that. And all of these people found out she got healed, and they went and lined up at her house and said, we need what she got. And Jesus healed them all. If that's the case, then he got rid of the devils, he got rid of other sickness, and the black plague had to go. Hallelujah! There's going to be sicknesses that hit our country, and it's already starting. Doctors don't even know how to treat that's coming from these other countries because we haven't had them here in many, many years since the 1800s or 1500. Sickness and disease that has not been in America that doctors will not know how to treat, that we're going to have to be crying out. We need just a touch from Jesus. Jesus, show up. It's hit our whole neighborhood. There's some kind of disease, some kind of plague, something going on, and there's going to be people like Peter's mother-in-law who Jesus will walk in the house and touch them, and they'll say, I'll see you later. I got to go out throughout Biglerville. I got to pray for all these people because he healed me, and he's going to heal them. That's what happened with John G. Lake. They had the bad disease and he was there in Africa and he was running from place to place trying to take care of people as he was there on the mission field and he was living there as a missionary and he was taking care of all these people and this one man stood at the tree praying and he said do you want something to eat he said I'm not gonna eat nothing till this whatever is hitting this country leaves and every person that they would treat take care of pray for 1520 would get it it had spread like wildfire, and he was exhausting himself. John G. Lake would stop at the tree, kneel down with the man, pray for a little bit, and he said, I got to go check on the people. And he said, one day as he was walking to go check on the man at the tree, headed to go take care of the sick, he said, I looked down in this valley, and he said, I saw a thousand or more sheep, and they were all black. And he said, I thought, what is this? And he said, all of a sudden, I thought, that is demons. 
That is, and he said, I got, he said, I dropped what I had in my hand to try to bring him some water and stuff, and I started to run. He said, but the man looked at the same time I did, and he started running too. And he said, we tore down the bottom of that hill, and as we ran toward those black sheep, they started poof, 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 disappearing. And he said, as each one disappeared till it was the last one, he said, they were gone. He said, all of a sudden, people started getting up out of their beds, being healed from this fever. Wow, he didn't even have to go by their house because a mighty move of God because some people spent some time in prayer and some people cried out to God, have mercy like the blind man on the road to Jericho who cried out and said, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, me, me. I said there's two things God responds to. And that's the cry of his people and the hunger of his people. I tell people, devil's picking on you. You got sickness, disease, start crying out. Hey, Jesus, help me now. You get that devil in trouble, he keeps picking on you. I love to just cry. What's wrong, little? What's wrong, my little girl? Damn, he's doing it to me again. He loves me so much he's got every hair numbered on my head. I'm special to him. And he wants to touch me and heal me. He wants to deliver me and save me. He's already paid for it all. Receipts paid in full. It's done. <laughs> Jesus wanted to do that. And that's all we need. Just a touch from Jesus. Just Jesus to touch. Even a certain ruler came worshiping him. And he knew his daughter was dead. And he said, if you will just come and touch my daughter. If you'll just come and put your hand on my daughter. But a woman with an issue of blood stopped him as he was on the way to the daughter's house. Because she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And yet... At as he, they said, don't bother him. Don't bother Jesus. You know she's dead. He said, I want him to touch my daughter. See, Jesus' death don't stop God. He says, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Sometimes some people give up. Now, there are some people don't know when some things need to be dead. This one guy came up to me and he said, uh, I just want you to pray for me and my friend that God will hurry up and give us this gift. I said, what gift? He said, we've been going to the graveyard praying for the dead to be raised, and we want to have that gift to raise the dead. I said, what? He said, yes, you, you've got a great anointing in you. You just pray that on us so that we can just go and raise the dead. And I said, God's not going to give it to you. What? I said, he's not going to give you that gift. I'm sorry. Well, why not? I said, because you don't know what should be dead and what should be alive. God don't need to give that. Do you be raising things up that everybody be saying, that's supposed to stay dead. There was a guy named David Hogan that when he was in Mexico, there was a lot of witch doctors and warlocks there, and they finally died, and some man came through with power and authority in Jesus, and they said, oh, our witch doctor's dead, and he went out there and prayed for five or six of them, raised them from the dead. David Hogan got back, and he said, who raised these idiots from the dead? He said, God got rid of them. He said, if they had repented, it's okay, but they ain't repented. They need to be dead. Sometimes there's some things that just need to be dead. But this daughter didn't need to be because Jesus went in and he put his hand on her. All the other people laughed. <laughs> yeah, right, come on in. She's dead. He's going to what? I'm sure even the father was saying, he's going to raise her from the dead. <laughs> you and y'all both... You know, he's so emotionally upset. Yes, he is. The dad just lost it, and he went and grabbed this guy with a beard and long hair and says, come on to my house. Oh, well, you know, he's desperate. We understand. But, hey, we need to talk to you because something's wrong with your head. You're losing it after losing your daughter. And he said, get out of the room. He wants everybody out of the room. And Jesus took his hand, and when he did, he told the daughter to rise up. He said something in another language, which meant for her to arise. And she sat up and was healed and came back alive. 
Glory! All we need is a touch from Jesus. Amen. Even the man who were running, the two blind men who was so desperate, and Jesus went into a house, and I'm sure even though they couldn't see, I know he's around here, and I want to be healed. And they went even into the house crying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. Can you imagine be inviting Jesus in your house, and here come two blind men in there hollering, Have mercy on us. Do something with them. He said, I am. I'm going to touch him. <laughs> Sometimes when I see people come to church, I say, God, you got to do something for them. He says, I am. I'm going to touch him. I said, glory. I want to be there. I want to be a part of it, God. I want to watch you touch him and heal him. I want to watch him get delivered and set free. I love it when they begin to... You okay? Oh, you quit hurting. Or they smile or they run or they jump. Oh, it feels good. I feel good. I feel good. Hey! <laughs> Just a touch from Jesus. That's all we need. Jesus touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And then the men who were in a place that had knowledge of him and heard, and they knew he was in that area, and they said, Go tell all the people. And they said, if they, we can just but touch the hem of his garment. And all the people gathered out into the street. When Jesus went by, they touched him. And everyone that touched Jesus was healed. Sometimes we need to touch him so he will touch us. But sometimes we just let, need to let him touch us. He touched me. Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy that floods my soul. Something wonderful happens, and I know, I know, Jesus touch me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus will you touch, touch me? me? Jesus touch me. And he made me whole. Oh, he touched me. Why don't you let him do it? Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something. Wonderful happens. What happens? I got healed. I got delivered. I got set free. Hot dog. I got something. Wonderful happens. And I know, I know Jesus touched me and he made. I want to close with this. Some have heard it, but for some of you, I know you haven't. And one night, my dad was closing up the tent. As he was lacing it up, he heard an ambulance pulled up. The man jumped out of the ambulance. He said, Sir, I need to speak to the healer. My dad said, Jesus, this man needs to speak to you. He said, Mr., no, I'm talking to you. And he started pointing at my dad. And he said, sir, I, I can't heal a headache on a fly. You're not talking to me. He said, yes, I am. I came in here earlier, and I brought the ambulance with the girl who had tuberculosis, and she had a hole in her lung the size of a silver dollar. And I watched you as you laid hands upon her and prayed for her, and she ran all over this tent. Then I watched the blind eyes being opened and the lame walking and the deaf hearing. I saw people breaking, their crutches being broken, come out of wheelchairs, off of stretchers. So don't tell me, mister, I need to talk to you. I ran home. I grabbed my daughter, who's been in a coma for six long years, and I've unhooked her off of the machines, my wife beating on me. You're killing 
killing our daughter. What are you doing? You're killing our daughter. And he said, I told her, please let me take him to this man, the healer, so he can pray for her so our daughter will live. She said, you're already killing her. And he said, sir, if you don't help me, she's in the back of the ambulance and she will die. My dad said, pull her out of the ambulance. He pulled her out and wheeled her in front of my dad. And my dad said, Lord, you know, only you can do this. And I only like praying for people when your anointing's here. So I need your help, Lord. This little girl's going to die. He said he reached over to pray for her. And as he did, he felt something lean with him. And he began to pray over her in the name of Jesus for the kingdom and glory of God. Arise and be healed in the name of Jesus. About that time, the little girl's eyes popped up, and she said, Hello, Daddy. He said, Hello, honey. She said, Hi, Daddy. She said, Who's the man in the white suit? I said, Honey, there's nobody here in a white suit. I said, Yes, it is. It's standing behind that great big man, and he's the one who told me to get up. <laughs> she got a touch from Jesus. I said, She got a touch from Jesus. I come to tell you that the man in the white suits here right now he wants to touch us I don't believe he gave me this message by accident just to say oh get excited because Jesus touches fun but you don't get one I believe he wanted me to speak this tonight to let you know that Jesus wants to touch you he wants to heal you he wants to deliver you he wants to set you free you're special to him and he wants you to know that you are special to him. That's why the man in the white suit's here. And I believe he's standing right here by me. So we're just going to stand up and get ready to come up and be prayed for. Because I feel his presence ever so strong right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, touch us. Jesus, touch them. If you'll just find a place here on the line and we'll just be reverent toward him to let him do what he needs to do to heal, deliver, and set free. If you need them to bring you a chair to sit on, that will be good, okay? If you need a chair, we'll be happy for you. You just sit right here in the front and we'll come pray for you there too. Jesus.